What is a standardized video interview and how can you effectively prepare for one? This is a somewhat new kind of online remote video format, so I'll take a couple minutes to unpack this for you a little bit and give you some strategies for success. First, hi, my name is Dr. Sarah Klebe and I'm an admissions expert at BMO. So a SVI, standardized video interview, is kind of like a hybrid of Casper and mul multiple mini interview in that it's a situational and also behavioral judgment test that requires you to record uh, your answers through video or audio. Um, and it's intended to evaluate two key competencies, your knowledge of professional behaviors in your field and interpersonal and communication skills. So as I said, this is a remote uh, online interview that you can take on any device that can connect to the internet, your computer, laptop, tablet, phone. Uh, it can be completed on your own time, within your own schedule, in your preferred location. Um, we do, however, recommend that you find a quiet, private, well-lit space before beginning the interview. And while you can technically complete it on any internet enabled device, um, it's really a good idea to try not to use Wi Fi. You don't want to lose your uh, internet connection midway through. And you should still treat this as a professional interview, dressing appropriately um, and um, just acting as if you were speaking to a real human being, even though you're just going to be recording your answers. More on that in a little bit. So the interview itself has six questions presented as text prompts to which you will, again, record an audio or video response. Um, there's two primary types of questions, behavioral and situational. Behavioral type questions will ask you to reflect on and describe a specific life experience that you've had, um, reflecting knowledge of professional behaviors and interpersonal and communication skills. Situational type questions are more like those MMI and Casper questions in that you'll be given hypothetical scenarios and asked how you would navigate that situation. So these two key competencies I'll unpack really quickly, knowledge of professional behaviors and interpersonal and communication skills. Um, for the first, the sort of sub-competencies, the things that they're looking for are a sense of empathy, altruism, compassion for the suffering of others, a clear sense of ethics and the ability to maintain those ethics under pressure, cultural competence, and general conscientiousness, the ability to be mindful of the needs of others and aware of the outcomes of your actions. Interpersonal and communication skills want to see that you can clearly facilitate um, attentive, uh, attentive information exchange, basically, that you can communicate effectively with others and communicate information to non-specialists. Uh, so this certainly includes oral communication, but also intel uh, emotional intelligence, being able to sort of identify and navigate really complex emotional terrain. And then your tendencies towards teamwork, leadership, facilitation, collaboration, etc. Um, each of these responses is then rated individually by a different evaluator on a scale of one to five, uh, with one being on the low end, five being on the high end. After each station is evaluated, those scores are added up for your total SVI score. So the final score can range from six, which would be low, one for each of the six stations, or 30, which would be very high, a five for each of the six stations. So here's some tips for preparing for this. Number one, you have to practice, and you have to do so using realistic mock interviews so that you can get used to this format. Again, this is new. It can be really easy to slip into um, bad habits or informal speech when we're not directly speaking to another person. Um, and also practicing realistically will help get rid of the fear of the unknown, make sure that you're able to perform smoothly on the day of your interview. Number two, you need to get expert feedback uh, from people who are unbiased and who have knowledge of what is being sought in the most successful answers. Um, you need to have someone who can identify specific areas of improvement and who can give you advice on how to make that improvement. So doing this with your family, it's unfortunately probably not the best. They're going to tell you that you're wonderful no matter what you do. Um, so we really strongly encourage you to get expert feedback. Number three, you need to learn to identify each of those question types and have a strategy for a different uh, question types as well. You never know what questions you're actually going to get on the day of, but if you can identify those question types and have a strategy for each type, 
then it doesn't matter what question you get <clears throat> because you'll already have a foundation in place. Number four, uh, as noted, you're going to be asked to um, discuss some past experiences that you've had, and we know that in these kinds of interview formats, you're often asked to reflect on things that are maybe unfortunate or things that you aren't proud of from your past. So you need to tell them what you've learned from the mistakes that you've made in the past. It's absolutely to, um, okay to have made mistakes in the past. You are human, and that's fine. But it's not okay if you haven't been able to reflect on that and if you aren't able to articulate how you have learned and grown and why you're better for having overcome that particular issue or mistake. Number five, make sure that your answers are specific. Uh, any admissions committee member, any interview evaluator is going to be really good at detecting BS. So you need to make sure that you are being real, authentic, sincere, uh, that you're giving real examples and that your reflection is from the heart. If you're not, they're going to see right through it. Number six, use if-then strategies for complex problems. Be able to say, you know, there may be a number of different outcomes here. If X happens, then I'll take Y action. If A happens, then I'll take B action. Um, this shows that you have complex decision-making capabilities, and that's really important here. Number seven, dress professionally. Again, because you can do this on your own time, even from your phone, it's really easy to, you know, be lured into a false sense of security. Like you can just curl up in your jammies and, and do it from bed. Do not do that. Treat this as a real in-person interview. Um, they are going to be watching everything that you're doing. You're on camera the whole time and you are being evaluated. So treat it professionally. And last, smile. Um, you should be open as you uh, sort of enter the, the, the space, the, I was going to say the room, but it's, a, it's sort of a virtual space. Um, but smile, just like a real interview. Humans are drawn in by a nice and genuine smile. You want to demonstrate uh, that you can be a future colleague of these individuals, um, and you want to demonstrate that you're someone who's approachable and easy to get along with. So, I hope you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful. If so, please do go ahead, like it, share it with a friend who might benefit from it. Be sure to subscribe to our channel on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, and look for us on a variety of other social media platforms. If you'd like us to help you with your SVI prep, click the link that should appear either above or below this video to see our program and schedule a free initial consultation. We'll set you up with one of our admissions experts to answer any questions you might have and get you started on your preparations. As ever, thank you so very much for your time, take good care, and I'll see you next time.